In this video, I'm going to defeat 20 star Carnage Ball with just this team of 5 units, without leveled equipment, and without using squad attack. Now, just to show, this is indeed on 20 stars. My currently active curry is a 2 billion HP curry, which uses a Carnage Elixir as the main ingredient, as the first sub ingredient, the second sub ingredient, and another 182 in other. So this is 185 of them in total. If you want a different main ingredient, you could instead use another 10 in other. I've only got this going for one day, because I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. I've also got the Friends for a Day bill active, which increases the chance of team attacks to 100%, because this is going to revolve entirely around team attacks. Additionally, I have a load of special curries for healing, and an SP recovery item. And the characters I'm using are all almost in revenge mode, so except for uh, um, Zerokun who's already in revenge mode and will enter it as soon as he leaves the map. The rest of them will be knocked into revenge mode based, uh, just by taking damage entering the map. Uh, Petta, the Sage, and Christo all have a similar setup for their, for their equipment and abilities. They're using an axe because it gives slightly increased critical damage, and the only enemy I'll be killing that resists axes is the easiest of them to kill anyway. They have a watermelon for Watermelon Smasher, which grants 50% more damage at the cost of 50% accuracy, but Christo will be able to fix the accuracy problems, and they all have a professional for more critical damage. The elemental innocence that Christo has here won't be needed, uh, I just move them over from another item. They all have Axel Gear for Overclocker, which grants teleporting movement, and it has high movement already. This is obtained by defeating Normal Ball, and otherwise it's just high movement gear. Priya just has her own weapon with a professional Axel Gear, movement gear. Zrokun has a gun because one of the abilities he'll be using, which I'll show in a bit. Leak for Combo Maker, which uh, grants him an extra normal attack, which will mean an extra team attack. And Professional for uh, the increased critical, dam critical damage. And Axel Gear and Movement Gear, yep. The extra damage from Prio and Zrokun won't matter too much. Most of the damage will be coming from Petta, the Sage, and Christo. Petta is being used because her overload allows other units to use their overloads twice. The Sage is being used because of multi-attacker, which causes someone to attack uh, to attack additional time for two turns, which will translate to more team attacks. And uh, she's using the indomitable spread uh, common overload for healing everyone, which I'll be able to use twice because of Petta's overload. And Christo is being used because he can grant 100% accuracy to everyone on the map with his overload. The evasion won't really matter for this. Priya is being used because her overload allows her to take another turn each time she kills an enemy while well, in her overload state. Uh, but she loses stats each time. But because she's going to be triggering a load of team attacks, the damage will be coming from the other units, so her loss of stats won't really matter. And Zvokun is being used for similar reasons. His super, his super luminal wolf overload allows him to create a bunch of shadows of himself, and those can all trigger team attacks separately. Ability-wise, uh, Petta's badass daughter increases the attack adjustment of adjacent overlord units. Now this isn't the raw attack stat, this is attack adjustment or attacking power, which is a semi-invisible boost to attacking stats, whichever ones you're using during, uh, during damage calcs. Zoroken and Priya are technically overlords, so this will technically boost their uh, damage output a bit, but their damage output won't matter very much. I don't think the Sagelius Mass Blaster even comes into this. 
Uh, Christos Tactician grants adjacent allies 100% accuracy. Uh, not super important for this because again he's using his overload to make everyone have 100% accuracy anyway. And so his ally lands 20% of his int towards whatever attacking stats adjacent allies use. Usually really useful. Kind of nice here but not as important. They all have Assault Attack, which increases damage dealt based on how many tiles you move. Uh, this caps at a 200% boost, and there is a bug to allow you to easily get this to reach the maximum of a 200% boost, and because of the restrictions I've placed on myself, I will need to make use of this bug. The 99 million stat version of this fight didn't need that, and if I was deploying more than 5 units, I could probably find a way of deploying more support units to make up for the loss in damage. But with these restrictions of no squad attack, uh, no leveled equipment, still trying it on 20 stars at only 5 units, I need to get what I can, basically. Bushido increases damage to single targets, we're attacking one target at a time. Rage Charge increases attack adjustment each time you uh, get hit by an attack. We'll be hit repeatedly just leaving the base panel, so that'll build quickly. Purgatory increases critical damage, and is really important to this, uh, because damage modifiers stack additively, attack adjustment modifiers stack additively, critical multipliers are multiplicative. This isn't going to be adding 50%. You know, this isn't going to be adding 50% to an already 100% boost or something. This is just one and a half times damage as long as they're critical. And we're going to be in revenge mode. We'll be criticaling. So yeah, this is a big deal. Uh, impact charge. Uh, so this is similar to rage charge. Every time we take a non-elemental attack, uh, it, it increases temp, um, attack adjustment. Ball's base panel attack is non-elemental, so that will build like that. Critical point, common ability of Petta can be spread on the uh, spread via the Carol World on any difficulty. Increases critical damage dealt to non-adjacent enemies. So this is going to be a fairly major damage source. Um, team formation increases damage during team attacks. And they've all got unstable power which you obtain via the Carol World and this is available on Demon Lord difficulty or above and then where they differ Petta and the Sage have King's Dignity which increases damage to boss units and Gender Bender which is available via Carol World and this is available on any difficulty uh, this switches the gender of the unit so the female Petta and Sage will be treated as male and I'll explain why that is in a bit. Now instead of these, Christo instead has I Won't Lose from Almez. So Almaz, uh, again, spread via Carol World on a difficulty. If you're at low HP, deal more damage. And Unconditional Love from Artina. Um, you, it gives you more attack adjustment, but you don't gain money. I'm not worried about not getting money. And the reason Chris has got a slightly different setup is he's already he's already male, so doesn't need gender bender, so he's got more slots to work with. And the reason for everyone being male in the foot soldier squad, which I've got full of units. I've got a bunch of units with. Bodyguards, which is a common ability of Girl Lahal, and this increases the attack adjustment of male units in the squad. So in that foot soldier squad, I have the three attacking units, and then the other 17 all have bodyguards for an 85% attack adjustment boost. So for one slot for Gender Bander to turn the male to, to benefit from that 85% attack adjustment boost, that's a big deal. And the Foot Soldier Squad also gives them 20% extra stats. And this is going to be needed to cancel out the fact that a couple of enemies on the map have Evil Eye, which lowers our stats. 
the other squad of note. Here's this one, which lets us use um, items from the base panel, which will allow us to use more healing items to get hit by Baal's base panel attacks more of times. And then Priya and Zvokan are going to be triggering the team attacks, and so their setup is based entirely around that. Uh, Priya's bundle attack won't help. She, when using skills, she deals uh, more damage for every empty panel in the skills AoE, so this won't factor into it. Medical Insertion doubles the power of support skills, or buff spells basically, in this case. Um, she has Braveheart at plus 4, which makes it reach 50%. Doubled by Medical Insertion, this is a 100% boost, which is the cap you can get from buff spells. So I'll be using Pre-Air partly for buffing units, along with Veteran Support, which is another common ability of Petta. And what this does is you can use a, a support skill without it using up your turn. So she can use a buff spell and still attack. Also, Angel Song. Increases the attack adjustment of adjacent allies. So that's just going to buff the attackers up a bit. And final blow, if a target barely survives, she'll attack again. So this will trigger more team attacks if needed. Never give up is a common ability of Asagi. If you perform a combo skill, it will make you perform an extra three times. But what it doesn't say is if you perform a team attack, it will make you attack again. And if that attack triggers a team attack, you'll, you'll attack again, up to three times. So this will give us three more team attacks. And then together I've got Leak Deimos and Sorrowful Moment. Leak Deimos is a common ability of Margarita, and what it does is, once per map, if you die, you come back in the base panel, which will allow Priya to uh, die twice, basically. And this will be useful with Sorrowful Moment. When she dies, all the enemies will have their revenge gauges set to zero. Revenge mode makes a unit take 25% less damage, and that will make them harder to kill, which is why we want to get rid of it. And we uh, we will need to get rid of it. The damage on this is quite tight, so yeah. Zroken has a somewhat similar setup. Uh, flowing water... His, his evasion is higher based on uh, how many nearby enemy units there are, won't matter. Underdog Bravery deals more damage to higher level units, or what doesn't say, it also works when tied. So this is that, this will make him deal a bit more damage. Um, his damage won't really matter much, but it's better than nothing. Efficient work, he can use an item without using up his turn. Final blow, again, if something badly survives, attack again. Angel Song, again, more attack adjustment to adjacent allies. Hasty Rush, a common ability of Girl Lahal. On your first attack on each map, attack again. This counts separately for each of the shadows, so each of the shadows will be able to trigger Hasty Rush. So this is more attacks for more team attacks. Bullet Set, this is why we have a gun equipped. Common ability of Asagi again. You do more. No you do an extra normal attack when you have a gun equipped. Uh, never give up, same as before. Essence Caregiver. When you use a um, use a healing item, also works with extracts. Um, it increases the effect of it. So instead of hitting one unit, it hits five of them in a plus shape. So this will allow us to use healing it healing items on everyone at once. Charismatic Novice isn't really needed for this, uh, we'll just have it on there anyway. Common Ability of a Measle, buffs the stats of adjacent allies. And then Tyrant Prinny, which comes from Tyrant Prinio, one of the DLC Prinnies. Basically makes you attack an extra twice, but you die after attacking. This will actually be useful, as well as making us attack more times. Um, while Petter's Overload allows units to use their overloads twice, Zoroken can't reuse his overload while his shadows are alive, any of them. But if all his shadows die attacking things, then Zoroken can spawn more shadows via, uh, via Petter's overload, allowing him to overload twice. So uh, yeah, the downside to this is actually an upside for us.
I think that covers the setup. Okay, let's get into the fight itself. Now, this is all going to be quite intimidating. Completely maxed stats on the enemies. The one enemy boost, so their stats are essentially treated as being 50% higher, despite already being capped. Um, Baal is automatically in revenge mode. The bits all strongly resist their own element. Baal just resists all weapons and all elements. Uh, all the bits are weak to one element except the star bit, which is slightly weak to a bunch of them. The bits additionally have uh, unique innocence on their equipment, which, uh, including, well, all of them have unique innocence on their equipment, but the bits specifically have Caregiver, Wuss, and Kindergartner, which reduce the magical damage they take, physical damage they take, and overall damage they take. And additionally, everything on the map has ultimate dignity, which makes them take less damage based on how high the cleat shop setting is. At 20 stars, they'll take 25% less damage. And on top of that, ultimate field is on the Chimera enemies. And with this many enemies on the map, that's 20% less damage everything takes. There is a huge amount of damage reduction going down here. On top of that, this bit, it says three or more panels away, it's more than three panels away, it's actually three or more. Uh, it takes half damage to attack from too far away. The actual damaging units will all be exactly two panels away, so not so much of a worry. Uh, this just gets stronger each time attacked, we have impact charge on some of our units. In the fight, it takes half damage from adjacent units. Well, it will be attacked from from adjacent, but the actual adjacent units won't be dealing much of the damage. The damage will be coming from units who are two panels away. And this one just evades magic half the time. Uh, not going to be a problem. Now, because all these enemies are near Baal, there's not really room to put someone next to Baal and then surround them with units to team attack with. So I'll have to get the Blade Master out of the way and this one out of the way to free up some space and likewise the Skull. The Skulls are the only enemies on the map that I actually need to kill that resist axes but they take quite a bit of damage anyway so I'm not that worried. Okay, I think I will start now. <laughs> I'm just going to position my units in a way that reminds me of what I'm doing. Overload time. So Petter's activated so everyone can overload twice. Uh, it doesn't actually matter the order I do this in. Petter can overload after someone else has already overloaded, it works fine. Uh, overload to heal everyone. Overload. Overload. So now that's all set up. So what do you get? 20% boost from range charge, 40% from impact charge. But now I've just healed them, let's boost that further. <laughs> Second is of the overload. <laughs> and here is where Zoroken's first job comes into it. Because of Lessons Caregiver. He can use items on all of them at once. Let's move him out of the way for a minute. Okay. 
Now to make use of the fact that I can heal from the base panel. <laughs> so I can do that three times, say five times per map. I've used up three of them. I'm going to just stop at that point. I could use the other. I could use the other two. But I'd rather just keep it even between all of them. Um, they're not quite at their max. They're only at 180% range charge. But that's that's going to be workable for this. So this is another thing of if I deployed more units, I could use more healing items. Because I do need to use a final healing item here. What I'm going to do with the main Zoroken because I don't actually need to use his uh, action. So I don't need to actually attack at all, only his, uh, his shadows are going to attack. But I'll just be using the SP healing item to keep Christo at, uh, at low HP so that I won't lose his active. And then let's do. Let's do one part of Trier's job. Just okay, so buff everyone. So everyone's got a stat buff. Now the units aren't at the maximum stats they could be. Uh, they're currently only at plus 70% stats. Uh, that's not going to quite cut it, and I'll fix that later. <laughs> Let's see, I need to uh, pre back here for a minute. So this is where this hot deck bug is going to be shown off. If you move while targeting a skill and then keep moving over the base panel and cancelling, it thinks I've already moved 20 tiles this turn. Or at least 20 tiles. Now, I'm going to use a skill from the base panel so it doesn't use up my movement. <laughs> Let's do something similar with Christo. And yep, Assault Attack is maxed on him. Now he's going to use, his, use up his actual action to be filler, and the reason for that 
is that I am going to summon my Netherworld, which has the Final Trump card effect. What that does is uh, boosts my stats by 50%, but at the end of the turn I'll lose if I haven't already won the fight. The thing is, if I end turn, I'm stuffed anyway. The balls will utterly destroy me. That pretty much. It won't even be the balls that are the big threat. The bits will destroy me if I don't win in one turn. Also, um, one thing about this fight, Baal actually destroys your Netherworld each turn and will cancel out your Netherworld effects. So, actually, if I did end turn and didn't lose, somehow didn't lose, I wouldn't actually lose from Final Trump card anyway, because Baal would cancel that out. But for this turn, I have got 50% extra stats from Unstable Power, 50% from Final Trump card, which, which is the 100% cap. I've got another 20% from Foot Soldier Squad to cancel out the minus 10% from the two Chimera enemies on the map having Evil Eye. So yeah, I'm I'm slightly overkill on weakening the plus percent stat cap. And Petter's not going to have any particularly special job. Like beyond uh, being one of the team attackers. So I don't need to do any extra actions with her, I just need to build up uh, assault attack. Now that is at 200%. Okay, now I will move the Zorokans around to give extra Angel Song boosts to people. And there goes one of the enemies. Uh, oops, I positioned them wrong. I don't, ab I don't think I absolutely need to be moving all the Zoroken Shadows around right now. But I'd rather not risk it too much. So yeah, those are the uh, Blade Masters down. Now for the Skulls. Fine. One more skull to go. Okay, that's the small stuff out of the way. Now, balls and the bits. Now, the balls are automatically in revenge mode, and some of the bits are starting to build up quite high here. Like, being in revenge mode is going to get in the way of me damaging them, and so this is where Sorrowful Moment comes into it. So, Priya returns to the base panel, comes out, gets damaged, goes back in, comes out, dies, uh-oh, Priya's dead, but Baal's no longer in revenge mode, and the bits have emptied their gauges as well, and because of Leech Deimos, she came back once, so I can still use her just as an adjacent buffer, so let's 
take out a ball. Oops. That's one ball gun. Now I need to start taking out bits. And you'll see that took a lot of attacks. You may also have noticed that the damage suddenly dropped towards the final few attacks. That's because all those attacks hit it so many times it went into revenge mode. Now with all those attacks, you know, you saw how many it took to kill it. I don't want these things entering revenge mode halfway into an attack. That would really be bad. I mean, it's gonna happen anyway, but I don't want it happen I don't want it happening halfway, I want it happening on, a, on just the final few hits. Because if it happens too early, I don't have the damage output to kill them. Because of that, I'm not actually... I'm going to kill another ball, but after that, I'm not going to kill another bit. I'm going to kill another ball again. You will see what I mean in a minute. Did I just... Oh, wait, yeah. Oops, I forgot to move the actual Zoroken, but it didn't matter. But yeah, so this is getting very close to revenge mode, which is why I'm not going to attack it yet. Instead, I'm just going to finish off another ball. And that is all the all the Zoroken shadows dead, and we are left with a bit that is almost in revenge mode, a ball that's getting quite uh, that's getting quite close, a bit that's not all that close, and a bit that is also very close. But remember, Priya came back to life once because of Margarita's common ability, Leech Deimos. And there is still a ball on the map to attack me when I leave the base panel. So, Priya, you've done your job now, thank you very much. Goodbye Priya, but also goodbye revenge mode. And that should cover us for the rest of the map. Because now all of Zoroken's shadows are dead, and because Petter's overload allows him to overload twice, here are more shadows. That's another bit down.
Oh, uh, forgot to point this out earlier. I think it's on the bar itself. You can't damage the bits until the respective bar has gone. So to damage the blue bit, or the water bit, I have to defeat this ball. Yeah, there's a lot of repositioning on this map. Let's move that here. That was going to get a bit close. But that was another bit down. And that just leaves this one. Which isn't that far into revenge mode. This final attack should end it. And down goes Ball. So that was 20 star Carnage Ball taken down with this team of 5 units without leveled equipment and without squad attack. And our reward for all of that is the Great Ball Horn, which is basically a sword with stats along the lines of a Carnage Topeza. <laughs> Carnage Topezahedron or Carnage Hercules armor with some extra movement on it and the range of a sort of mid-tier bow. This would actually be a really good sword if it wasn't basically a bragging rights ward since, you know, you have to beat the hardest boss in the game to get it. Also, amusing fact, of all the Carnage rank 40 swords, this actually has the lowest attack. It's just, that's kind of irrelevant when all the other stats max out so easily that uh, yeah that's the lower attack's not really a concern they, the attack on the other ones will max out too quickly anyway and everything else will be struggling to catch up in fact this is actually tied for one of the two easiest items in the game to soft cap this and actually the carnage hercules armor um, Reach the max base stats the fastest of any item. Carnage Trapezohedron ma uh, maxes the non HP stats really quickly, but when you start including HP as well, uh, yeah, the Great Balhorn and the Carnage Hercules armor are actually the ones that uh, max out, uh, actually reach the soft cap fastest. If I've got one, oops, I think I've got one. Next out here somewhere. Well, soft cap. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that, and thank you for watching.